in all of these things, but specifically in a da'wah. Specifically in a da'wah. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Utaymi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he has an entire book that he wrote on the subject matter. He has an entire book that he wrote on the subject matter of being patient with the harms that you receive from other people because you are holding fast to Islam. And included in that, of course, is a da'wah in Allah, that you are harmed because you are ordering the good and forbidding the evil. That you are ordering the good and forbidding the evil. And he says that the levels of patience are as follows. There are three levels of patience. What are they? The three levels of patience. The sabru, the scholars they say, is habsu nafs. And it is to hold yourself back from something. Or upon something. So patience means al-habs. And to confine yourself to something. Or hold your back self from something. So there are three levels of patience. What are they? Mish'an. The three levels of patience. You be patient upon obedience. Hatta you addiha until he fulfills the act of obedience. Give me the second Mishan. Refraining from evil. Refraining from evil. And he habsu nafs an al haram. Yani to withhold yourself, to hold yourself back from al ma'asi, from sin and disobedience. And he to force yourself to stay away from sin and disobedience. It's a tremendous statement by Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala about that. About that. He said, Habsan Mufidan. There are two types of confinement. There are two types of confinement. And in the dunya, the believer is gharib. And he's a stranger, so we can say solitary confinement. Right? Sometimes it's all by himself in this. There are two types of confinement that are necessary for a person. That if he that are the meaning of the statement of the Prophet وسلم, where the Prophet said, Adunya Sijnul Mu'min wa Jannatul Kafir. That this world is the prison of the believer and the paradise of the disbeliever. We know this well known statement of Ibn Hajar, where a poor Jewish man said, when he saw Ibn Hajar, who was very wealthy, riding in his best clothing upon a very expensive horse, he said, you say that your Prophet ﷺ said such and such. He said, what kind of paradise am I in and what type of prison are you in? He said, in comparison for what is waiting for the believers in the next life, this is a prison in comparison. And what I have of wealth and status and influence and so on and so forth, is like a prison in comparison to the next life. And in comparison to what is waiting for you in the next life, you are in paradise right now. Allahu Akbar. Ibn Qayyim, he said there are two types of confinement. You could say solitary confinement. Two types of confinement. That in order for you to have everything made available and open up for you, the paradise and all that is in it in the next, you are either, Ibn Qayyim says, you will either leave this world leaving from prison or going to prison. You will either be leaving from prison or going to prison. So the two types of confinement, he says, is to confine yourself to the obedience of Allah and to confine yourself, to restrain yourself, to shackle yourself so that you stay away from sin and disobedience. And if you are in that type of confinement in this life, to restrict yourself to obedience, which is for your own good, and to restrict yourself and staying away, confine yourself away from disobedience because it would harm you in this world and the next if you were to do it, then you will be leaving prison after you die, going to the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, abad al-abad, and for eternity. Or you will, if you fail to do so, and you will be under the threat of punishment from Allah, and you will be leaving from this world to go into a prison, and to be imprisoned in the hereafter, to receive the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so far we have two types of patience. So far we have two types of patience which is restricting yourself to obedience and restricting yourself away from disobedience, right? The third type is what? Being patient upon the decree of Allah. What is meant by being patient upon the decree of Allah? حَبْسُ nafs عَنَ التَّسَخُّتْ بِالْمَقْدُورِ So that's a correct definition. 
But there is something very important that is missing. It is to hold yourself back. Just like you are holding yourself upon obedience and holding yourself back from disobedience. It is to hold yourself back, your nafs back, from a tasakhut bil maqdur. From being displeased with what Allah has decreed. It is to hold yourself back from being displeased with what Allah has decreed. This is mandatory upon every Muslim. To hold yourself back from being displeased with what is decreed. Is not the same as being pleased with the decree of Allah. Being pleased with the decree of Allah is where it is all the same to you. Whether you are test, whether you are tested or whether you are made to be in a comfortable situation. A rakha is all the same as a dharra. And if you are in a hard situation or in a good situation, it's all the same to you. That's a person who is radin. And that is mustahab, la wajib. That is something recommended, but it is not mandatory. To be pleased with the decree of Allah is not mandatory. It is highly recommended. But what is mandatory is to fight yourself and to stop yourself from being displeased. To stop yourself from being displeased. And you can understand that on a human level. If you become upset with another person and they are your brother or sister in faith, perhaps you are upset with your wife, perhaps you become upset with a parent or something of the sort, they have rights upon you. They have rights upon you. And so you fulfill their rights, although you may not enjoy their company at that moment. You fulfill their rights because that is what Allah has made mandatory upon you. But you may do so a little begrudgingly, right? You may do so a little bit and you with some dislike for making them happy because they made you upset. But you fulfill their rights because they are their rights. Because those rights belong to them and Allah has obligated that upon you. That's not the same as fulfilling their rights and you with some pep in your step, right? There's a pep in your step. And if your wife says, this is your right, it is your right to intimacy, here I am. Come and get intimacy. That's not the same as your wife saying, oh baby, you look good today. You smell good today, sir. You know, the children are asleep. We've got time for ourselves. There's a difference between those two things, right? Absolutely, positively. Right? Absolutely, positively. There's a big difference between those two things. Between a person being pleased and happy to do something. And between a person fighting within their self. Making their self have to rally. That's how we are as adults, right? You have to rally on a daily basis. You wake up in the morning, you don't feel good. You take some, what do they call that? Emergency, right? The emergency, that vitamin C boost in your system. You wake up, say, I have to go to work. I have to pay the bills. I don't really want to go into work today. You may enjoy your job in a general fashion, right? I enjoy what I do. I'm grateful that Allah has blessed me with the opportunity to take care of my family. I enjoy what I do for a living, that sort of thing. But you have to rally. You have to rally, right? It's your day off. You want to relax. Your kids are like, Abby, let's go and do Abby. They got a long list of things. Your wife has a honey-do list, right? Honey, can you do this, right? Honey, can you do that? There's 15 things your wife wants you to do on the weekend. It's like, this is my day off. These are my days off. I want to enjoy myself. I want to relax. But... Your family has a right upon you. Your children have a right upon you. That sort of thing. You have to rally. There's a difference between doing that because you have to do it and doing something because you want to do it and doing something because you want to do it. So what is mandatory when it comes to things that are difficult in our lives from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we fight ourselves from being displeased with what Allah has foreordained that may be difficult for us or may be painful, especially those painful instances in life. And where a person goes through loss of wealth or property or the life of a person that they love or something of the sort. And he is difficult for a person. And he, what is mandatory for a person is حَبْسُ nafs عَنَ تَسَخُّتْ بِالْمَقْدُورِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى إِذَا أَحَبَّ قَوْمًا أَبْتَلَاهُمْ That when Allah loves people, he tests them. فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرَّضَى وَمَنْ سَخِتَ فَلَهُ سُخْتُ 
whoever is pleased, فَلَهُ الرَّضَى Then that is what they get. Then that is what they get. That's a tremendous reward in and of itself. There are many hadith that are like this. That whoever is such and such, فَلَهُ The same thing. And that's what they get. And he, when the clearest hadith that state that, مَنْ كَانَتْ حِجْرَتُهُ إِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Whoever is hijrah to Allah and His Messenger, what does he get? Allah wa Rasuli. He gets Allah and His Messenger. That's, that's azim. And he gets what he set out for. مَنْ رَضِيَ فَنَهُ الرَّضَى When Allah loves the people, He tests them. Whoever is pleased, فَنَهُ الرَّضَى Then he gets a rada. That's a reward in of itself. The scholars, they say, الرَّضَى جَنَّةٌ مُعَجَّنَى Jannatun fi dunya, Jannatu dunya. Being pleased with the decree of Allah, which is a step above being patient with the decree of Allah, is paradise on earth. It is paradise on earth. Being pleased with the decree of Allah is paradise on earth. وَمَنْ سَخِتَ فَلَهُ سُخْت And whoever is displeased, فَلَهُ سُخْت Then his punishment is a سُخْت. That in and of itself is a punishment. That he is displeased, that he is miserable in his situation, as opposed to being patient and having the diya, having the brightness of faith, and he having light and guidance, which is sabr, diya, as the Prophet said. Patience, it is illumination. The scholars, they say that al diya is something, it is illumination that comes from some ihraq, and he's something being burnt, right? And when you see. Uh, light being cast and there's something on fire. So there's some harara, there's some type of heat and discomfort that is connected to it, but at the same time it provides you with light. And the person by having patience and they are guided, they are comfortable, so on and so forth. And if they reach a level of arrida, where they have no discomfort in their chest and they're not fighting themselves, their self from being displeased, then this by itself is a reward. And the person who is displeased and that by itself is enough of a punishment. فَلَهُ سُخْت Then they have Alif Lam سُخْت They have as سُخْت Meaning, سَخَطَ Allah is upon them. That Allah's is pleasure is upon them. And at the same time, Allah is displeased with them. And at the same time, they are displeased and they are miserable in their situation. Instead of learning from their situation and being molded and matured by their situation, they're being displeased as a punishment in and of itself. As a punishment in and of itself. And so being tested, being patient with what you are tested with as it relates to the aqdar Allah al-mu'lima. And he, what is painful from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we look at the three categories, the three categories of things, this is the most difficult of the three categories. To be patient with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more difficult than being patient upon obedience for most people. And is more difficult than being patient and staying away from disobedience for most people. And this is no'an. Being patient with what is pre-decreed is of two types. It is of two types. Those things, Ibn Taymiyyah says, that are what are called asbab samawiyah, the heavenly causes, things that you know they are mahdu qadrin la, that nobody could do anything to change. You're sick, deal with it. You're poor, deal with it. In the past, when people were poor, they knew that they were poor just as a test, as an affliction. They didn't say, as people today, what they call the revolutionary age, with the revolutionary spirit, people scapegoat other people. It's because of the wealthy that I'm poor. It's because other people have money and I'm their victim. Right? The victim mentality. People didn't have that in the past. That's a new occurrence in human history. That wasn't the mentality of most people in the past. A person was poor. They were poor not because of some you know, the system was stacked against them or something of the sort. They just dealt with it. This is something. This is how it is. Qadrullah. It's a test from Allah. You take the positive steps to remove yourself from poverty. And you don't say that there's some you know, structure outside of myself that's keeping me down. You see in the time of the Prophet وسلم, in the time of the early generations of Islam, that the imma of the dunya, the imams of the dunya, were from the mawali. They were from the freed slaves. 
in the second generation of Islam, city after city after city after city after city, all of the greatest of the ulama, they were all from the Mawali. The greatest of the ulama, they were all from the Mawali. In the time of the Tabi'een, in the time of the Tabi Tabi'een, the greatest Imams, they were either directly freed slaves or the children or the grandchildren of freed slaves. So a person, they take the positive steps to enrich themselves, to get wealth for their self, to take care of their responsibility, to educate their self, to learn, so on and so forth. They take personal responsibility. And they are patient. These are asbab, samawiyah, there are things that Allah has decreed. And if you want to change how things are, then you take the means and put your trust upon Allah. The Salaf, they said, men arada an yakun aqwa nas falayatawakkal ala Allah. Whoever wants to be the strongest people, then let them place their tawakkal upon Allah. If you want to be the strongest of the people, falayatawakkal ala Allah. Tawakkal ala Allah. Put your trust upon Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your trust upon Allah, the one la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. The one that there is no hawla wa la quwwa illa bihi. There is no way for you to change from one hal to another hal. From one circumstance to a better circumstance. And there is no quwwa, no means for you to do so. No strength for you to muster, except by his help. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the person is patient with these things that are called asbab samawiyya. Like the weather is unpleasant on a particular day. It's not going to help you to go outside and be like, it's so cold, it's raining today, I know it's going to be a bad day because it's cloudy and gloomy outside and I just feel gloomy inside. Inside, That's a child's mentality, right? The child, they look outside and they're like, I can't play outside today because it's raining. How many adults, they act like that, right? They see the weather is unpleasant outside, they're like, oh, here we go again. Qadr Allah, deal with it, right? Deal with it. This is what Allah has foreordained for the good of the earth, for vegetation and plant life to thrive on the earth, so on and so forth, the changing of seasons, the coming of the rain, all these sorts of things are a ni'mah from Allah. They're a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person says, that, Oh Allah, give us a beneficial rainfall. Oh Allah, give us a beneficial rainfall. When they see the rain, they ask Allah for the good of that rain, they seek refuge from any evil from that storm or from that rain. And so these asbab samawiya, from the two categories of things that are difficult from the qadr of Allah, they are the easier of the two. They are the easier of the two. And the things that you say are completely from the qadr of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they are things that are largely outside of your control. They are largely outside of your control. And they are not impacted by the actions of others. And they are not impacted by the actions of others, which will show you where we're going with this. Which is contrary to the second type, which are things that are hard and the way that they and the reason that they are hard, part of the reason, Jews Usabab, part of the reason of why those things are difficult and hard to deal with are the actions of other people. Are the actions of other people. Because somebody has oppressed you or somebody has wronged you. And we can categorize this into two different categories. Things that are difficult in dealing with other people, which is from the decree of Allah, that is connected to the dunya, to worldly life. And things that are difficult in this way that are connected to the deen, that are connected to the religion. When a person is trying to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do their best to improve themselves religiously, it's very hard to face opposition. It's very hard to be all by oneself. And so Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Taymi rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, this is the most difficult type of patience. The most difficult type of patience is where you are patient with something that you are being tested with that is painful from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it relates to the abusiveness of other people. People harm you because of your religion. People harm you because of your religion. And so he wrote an entire book where he explains in great detail how to deal with the harms of people. And Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he has a lengthy section that is almost verbatim word for word what is in that book of Ibn Taymi rahimahullah ta'ala in his book Madarij as-Salikin. Madarij as-Salikin. 
And there are around 20 odd things in number. And those things have been translated, and you could probably find them in your local Salafi bookstore. Right? Alhamdulillah, and the patience, and the, uh, the treatise is called Gratitude and Patience. Gratitude and Patience, but almost the entirety of that book is about that last category of patience, being patient with the harms of people. Being patient with the harms of people.